Today, I am watching Ben Sanders do some of his YouTube shoutouts. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the final video of Latvian Literature Week. So this is another review, but before I get into this, I just want to let you guys quickly know about an update to my review system. So basically, I'm going to continue doing longer reviews for books that I particularly want to highlight, and buddy reads, and this kind of thing. And then other reviews are going to get bundled together in a shorter format. And we're going to have Archive Fives, which is basically five reviews in one. So keep your eyes peeled for those, because those are coming soon. The idea being, you know, I don't know, I guess put more focus on individual books when I specifically want to highlight them and then the rest of them, they can all go in one video and also I can clear my backlog. Uh, thanks everybody as well for the response so far to Latvian Literature Week. So I'm currently filming on, it's on, oh it's on Thursday, we're on Thursday. So it's currently Thursday the 22nd of March. A lot of these videos have obviously been pre-filmed to make sure that I've got the chance to get them out. But I've really appreciated everybody getting on board. People talking about taking the Latvian Literature tag. So uh, Catalyst Reads, I tag you by the way because that way it's official and you have an official tag. Anyway. With that all out of the way, I want to do a quick review today of Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstena. So, I went to the launch of this. This was originally called Mother's Milk. It's called Matters Piens in, um, in, in Latvian. And it's hard to explain what this is really about. I actually, uh, I was chatting to Sean the Book Maniac and he was saying, Oh, which Latvian book would you recommend I start? I'm into li uh, literary fiction. And I said this one and it turns out he already had it on his uh, TBR. So, hopefully he does check that out. And that's, I guess, what you'd call it. It's literary fiction, but it's also historical fiction. I don't know. I hate putting books in genres, so I'm not even going to try here. I am going to read the blurb, though. So, The literary bestseller that took the Baltics by storm now published for the first time in English. This novel considers the effects of Soviet rule on a single individual. The central character in the story, a nameless woman, tries to follow her calling as a doctor, but then the state steps in. She is deprived first of her professional future, then of her identity and finally of her relationship with her daughter. Banished to a village in the Latvian countryside, her sense of isolation increases. Will she and her daughter be able to return to Riga, where political change begins to stir? And the fact that it's set in Riga was actually making it super relatable for me as a reader, because I'd recently been there as well. Um, talking about the book quickly, aesthetically, it's beautiful. It has these, look at these front flaps here. The internal layout is stunning. This is published by, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's Perine, I think, P-E-I-R-E-N-E. -E. And uh, this is part of their Home in Exile series. Part of the uh, proceeds from this actually go to a charity as well, which is basically helping refugees too, which is cool. And you can subscribe to this press and receive, you know, th three or four books a year for a certain fee. And it just helps them to guarantee they have a readership when they do publish them. And I think that's all really cool. So it was called Mother's Milk in, in Latvian, but when it was translated, it was translated into Soviet milk. And part of that was because there's already a book called Mother's Milk. But I think part of it as well is kind of a marketing tool, really. And it, it, it is a shame because Mother's Milk... As even as a term, even in the translation, it carries a lot of weight. A lot of it is about you know the milk that they give to uh, you know that the mother gives to the daughter. And for example, there's a big part about it that the mother actually doesn't breastfeed her daughter, and the daughter doesn't like milk, for example. But then the metaphor of it is there as well. And this is something we talked about during our visit to Riga about translated fiction, whether you can get the full experience across. And I don't know because I can't read Latvian, so I don't know whether this is an accurate translation or not. But reading it as if it was written this way in English, it does have a Latvian feel. Certain t there are certain sentences where you're like, the way that the sentence is structured, it does feel translated, if that makes sense. But not in a way that throws you out of it and think makes you think of a bad translation. It, it more makes it feel as though somebody... It feels as though a Latvian is telling you the story in English, which I, I guess is effectively what it is, you know. By the way, I'm not entirely sure how much of this is autobiographical and how much of it isn't. It reads in a way that it doesn't really matter. It also jumps between the mother and the daughter quite often, and both of them are nameless, so sometimes it's hard to tell who's talking. But at the same time, the cat just ran past. But at the same time, I think that adds to the story. Just a lot of this, a lot of the narrative just really takes you to the sense of the time and place. It's one of those books where it's not necessarily about this fast place plot of things happening, although things do happen, but it's more about the journey and the journey along the way and, and how it relates back to history as well. I'm going to read you a sample here. 
After my father's death, I slowly grew to hate both my mother and our general situation. Troubled by her own history, she urged me to learn everything my teachers wanted, not to talk back, and to be an active member of the communist youth organisations. My mother was protected by my stepfather. Once a soldier in the victorious army of the Great Patriotic War, both his service in the guard of Latvia's president and his brother's voluntary enlisting in the German army were obscured by their illustrious background, the bloody poker of history. I think what's sad here, for example, a little section about, again, because Latvia was under Soviet oppression, so it was cut off from the West. My mother's brother was alive and well in London. He owned a cloth factory and sent packages with things unseen here. Beautiful fabrics, skeins of wool and patterns from which my mother sewed our clothes. Twice a year, my mother sent the Soviet agencies a request for permission to visit him. Twice a year, she received an official reply with the decision, Netzelubzbrano, non-essential. Her 10-year communication with the regime ended once again with Netsula Brasno, the response to her last request for permission to go to London for her brother's funeral. And again, it's also clashed against what was happening in the West at the time, so here we go. I picture my mother not as a medical student in Soviet Latvia carrying an unwanted baby in the grey Riga autumn, but instead with a bandana tied around her forehead, her fat tummy half bared, in that parallel world where freedom reigns and the Who are singing at Woodstock. It is historical fiction, it takes you right up to the end of the 1980s and actually there's a crossover between when I was born and when this ends. So unfortunately I knew what the end was kind of going to be, partly because I've recently been to Riga so because this is historical fiction and I know the historical fact I could kind of see where it was leading to. But equally it ended about three months after I was born and I know what was going on in the world when I was born if that makes sense. She finds a copy or, or half a copy of 1984 as well and she's reading that and because obviously under Soviet regime a lot of books were banned, a lot of media was banned but equally God was banned, you know, you couldn't be religious and so there are conversations when people are like, do you believe in God? And she'll say, I never met him. It's a really beautifully written book, I mean, and translated, I mean, I must assume that it's as poetic and beautiful in, in Latvian as it is in English as well. There's also a lot of sad stuff where you know, it, it contrasts the, the medicine from the West with the medicine from the East as well. So, for example, there's a, a woman here who is kind of, she's suffering from a medical condition, so her breasts aren't fully developed, and she's kind of stuck in an in-between state, and they have the hormone therapies available in the West, and our, you know, untitled character has read about it, and she's a doctor, but she can't do anything about it. Her mother as well has her problems with drinking drugs, which is kind of for forgivable from the time that she was in. Here are some, uh, some of the words of a Soviet song. So it says, the words of a Soviet song fitted our idyllic view of the world. And it's here in Latvian and in English as well. Might, mighty vast my land of birth, its fields and forests, rippling sunbeams. Of hundreds of other lands, I don't know anywhere man can be so free. There's a character in it called Jesse as well. And there are biblical connotations there. But again, you know, religion is being suppressed by the, by the Soviets. Talks here... Um, She's talking about taking a walk and she says maybe she'll go as far as Lenin Street and that street was also known as Adolf Hitler Street when the Germans occupied it and it's now known as Freedom Street which makes me happy. And that's one of the things because I'd, I'd been to Latvia I recognised a lot of the things here so for example I, I went to see the Freedom Monument it says here um, and then they had taken a walk around the nearby Freedom Monument which was known as Milda. For one, for one lat, a street photographer had taken a picture of my mother and father standing beside Milda. And I've been there. We have again a reference back to the milk. So, uh, in our country school, drinking milk was obligatory. I hated milk and all that was associated with it. I struggled with it as if with an invisible devil trying to possess me, no matter how hard I resisted. I tried to drink it in great gulps, not breathing through my nose so as not to taste it. After drinking my glass of milk, as often as not, I would rush to the school toilet and try to make myself sick. References to beetroot, for example, or even the references to the food in this, you can still see if you visit Riga now in the restaurants, you can see how the food is influenced by the food that used to be eaten at the times when this was written. And this really covers maybe late 60s to 1989 basically it ends in 1989 i would say and it really it's all it's all about the the relationship between the mother and the daughter but set against the soviet occupation of of latvia as well it's just a fascinating book it's very i that's why i think it probably is literary fiction because it's hard to describe it it's hard to it, you know how life of pi nothing happens i mean i hated life of pi and i did really like this but it's got that kind of vibe to it where the actual 
the process of reading the story itself and the narrative and the things you learn and all of that kind of thing are more important than any any single thing that happens throughout it you know but at the same time you do see a lot of the injustice that's happening you see a lot of the desperation in um you know in soviet latvia i mean this you know you could argue this is a feminist book but i i don't know i think it's a post-feminist book that's how i see it you know the fact that you've got strong female characters in it and you know topics like abortion and things like that because again it's under soviet occupation um that just it works seamlessly into the narrative and it just makes it for a fascinating read we have here um they're talking about the daughter and milk and uh, the, the the doctor says maybe she has an allergy to milk don't make me laugh you're a doctor is there such a thing as an allergy to milk the healthiest and most noble of foods do you not as a mother fear that without milk she might not develop fully maybe it's because she never received her mother's milk which again was the original title but soviet milk I guess it works just as well. So on that note, I'm going to end this review because I don't want this to be super long. So um, yeah, I'm going to give my rating and my rating. I think I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. It was very solid. Even the aesthetics of this book, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So far, it's my favourite of all the Latvian books that I've read. And I recommend you check it out. And um, maybe if you ask Sean the Book Maniac, he'll also read it and give it a review as well. So there we go. So anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new here. Hit a like if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the sound of this book. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. And also the archive top five things. But just keep your eyes peeled. You'll pick it up. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.